Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about some upcoming major winter storms that are going to potentially be occurring with an upcoming extreme pattern. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. And I'd also highly recommend that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below, and then also our very awesome channel membership, which you can click that button next to the subscribe button and check out today. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, this upcoming weekend, we have a few severe weather the risks what do you think is the highest risk we will see will that be a marginal slight enhanced or possibly more let me know in the comments down below and i'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video let's get straight into this video and first things first we're taking a look at that simulated radar here from our european model the best model around and as you can see it's going to be pretty quiet here by the time we're taking a look at about tuesday at about 21z which translates to about 3 p.m there on tuesday march 9th so we're going to be quiet today and tomorrow the weather is going to be like so nice guys it is going to be great in the eastern United States, at least the west. Well, not quite as much, so sorry if I got your hopes up there. Uh, but you guys have been dealing with some nicer weather before, and now it's kind of flipping around, so everybody's getting their fair share of nice weather. By the time we're taking a look at about 6 a.m. there on Wednesday, we see a major winter storm and snowstorm actually developing. A 999 millibar low pressure center there for southern Nebraska, bringing some moderate to heavy snowfall there for Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, South Dakota, and even Nebraska there with some rainy conditions going on there for poor of eastern Nebraska, eastern South Dakota, and then portions of Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, and Wisconsin as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on where this snowstorm is going to come to an end eventually. We're going to see where this one closes out, and then we're going to begin to see some severe weather. Now this is what the simulated radar is going to look like by the time we're taking a look at about 1am there on Thursday, March 11th. And as you can see, there is plenty of snowfall going on up there for Minnesota, South Dakota, and North Dakota from that snowstorm. But I would like to draw your attention down to Kansas, Oklahoma, portions of Texas, Missouri as well. Uh, we have a lot of storminess developing down there. And by the time we're taking a look at the Cape that was occurring just a few hours earlier at about maybe 11pm there on Wednesday... We see those greens, which is indicating the 900 to 1500 amounts, but we see some yellows there also for Oklahoma and Kansas, which is 1500 or more amounts of Cape, which is definitely sufficient for some severe weather activity. And actually, by the time we're taking a look at the Wednesday into Thursday morning, severe weather outlook from the National Weather Service here. This is day three, so this could get upgraded. There's plenty of time here for them to upgrade that, but... At this point where there was that high cape, we have a marginal risk of severe weather that could be upgraded to a slight. It could be even downgraded to a general thunderstorm risk, although they never really downgrade because they usually go with the minimalistic, more conservative approach and then work their way up. So I don't think that will be the case. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to watch the very, very tail end of that snowstorm occur. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and move on to some other storms in just a moment. Now we're kind of backtracking here on that simulated radar. We're taking a look at about 11 p.m. there on Wednesday where that snowstorm is finishing up up there for the upper Midwest. Let's take a look at about 1 p.m. there on Thursday, March 11th. And you can see that one is fully moved up into Canada up there. We do have some snowfall going on for mountainous regions of uh, California there, Nevada, and the Four Corner States as well. And then also some rainfall going on over there for portions of the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and the Plains. I think there could be some severe weather. That's day four. So I would not be surprised if we see a marginal risk or a slight risk. They don't have a percent chance risk at all at this point for uh, Thursday into Friday. But Friday through Sunday, that's a different story. We will take a look at that actually momentarily. Here's that total snowfall towards the point where we're at. So this is through Thursday evening. Um, so this is with snowstorm number one, basically. If you're anywhere in the grays, you're expecting a dusting, if anything. Within the lighter blues, two to six inches. Within the purple, six to 10. And then there's some pinks all over the place. That's nine to 18 inches of snow. We even have some more pastel shades there for Wyoming and even California there as well. That's where we're at 20 inches plus. So with this first round of snowstorms, we're expecting quite a decent amount of snowfall, but we're expecting a ton more after this point as well, actually. Now, I want to draw your attention towards about 1 p.m. there on Friday. And by the way, I am planning on doing a lot of live streaming if we're going to see a lot of severe weather. If it's just a slight risk, I might do some live streaming, but definitely if there's some enhanced or moderate risks within here, I'm certainly going to be live streaming for those types of events. Uh, so by the time we're taking a look at about 1 p.m. there on Friday, March 12th, you can see some storminess. This is a classic setup. We have the cold heading in from the west and the north, and then the warm just pushing up from the gulf. 
there through Texas up into Oklahoma and Kansas, as well as Missouri, creating a lot of storminess there. This is a classic setup here, and I would not be surprised to see, again, slight enhanced moderate risks going on uh, throughout the weekend here. So we're going to watch for that very closely. Here's the Cape, and as you can see, it's not too impressive yet. Uh, but by the time we're taking a look at later that evening, uh, by about 1 a.m. or so there on Saturday, you can see we have the 1,000 plus amounts all over the place for Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. So throughout the day, Friday, heading into Saturday morning, uh, we're going to have a lot of cape, a lot of storminess, and just a classic setup. So I think all types of severe weather is possible. Uh, anything from a you know wind and hail event with a slight risk to a full-blown tornado outbreak is possible at this point. It's a very long range for severe weather. Uh, so we're still taking a look at many different possibilities and we're trying to pinpoint that down. This could be anything from a just, again, general severe weather risk that's not a big deal to a very big deal at this point. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to move on towards later in the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, uh, and even later into next week where I think there's an even bigger severe weather risk. So there's just tons of severe weather discussion to be had coming up in just a moment. Now here we are taking a look at approximately Saturday afternoon at maybe about 3 p.m. Now the Storm Prediction Center daily outlooks, I want to remind you, they actually go from 6 a.m. until 6 a.m. usually. So we're seeing 12Z to 12Z. So it actually goes through the night and in through the morning. So the Saturday into Sunday outlook is going to last from about, well, about 6 or 7 a.m. on Saturday until 6 or 7 a.m. on Sunday. So all the way overnight. Uh, that's just important as we move forward and talk about the severe weather risks. But we're taking a look at about 3 p.m. on Saturday, like I said, March 13th. And here's the Cape. We see plenty of those greens, which is, again, the 1,000 to 1,500 amounts. And we even see some of those yellows, which is the 1,500 plus amounts going on there for Texas and Oklahoma. And by the time we're taking a look about 1 p.m. on Sunday, you can see there's less Cape, but we actually do have this storm prediction that are kind of hopping on board that date. We will take a look at that soon. Here's Tuesday, March 16th. Keep in mind, this is a very long-range outlook, but the European model is saying there's going to be a ton of CAPE showing up as we head into next week with the pattern that they're expecting. So it is worth mentioning that these models are picking up on high amounts of CAPE moving on short of the Gulf states here. Could be a Dixie Alley severe weather event as we do see that CAPE spread basically from the Gulf Coast of Texas all the way to uh, Florida there. And then take a look by time. We're taking a look at about 1, a or sorry, 1 p.m., on Wednesday, March 17th, again, a very long range outlook this is almost 10 days out. But if this ends up being anything close to what this is showing, we're going to want to watch out for a huge severe weather event as we head into next week, because those yellows and oranges is high amounts of capes. And we even see some of those reds showing up for Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, and even Alabama there, which is significant amounts of Cape. That is 2,500 to like 3,600. We're picking up a maximum, as you can see on the bottom right, on Weatherbell, they always have the maximum values showing up there. 3,269 uh, Cape there, which is just huge amounts, and I think that's right there in Mississippi. So we're going to be watching very, very closely for that severe weather event, possibly next week, but especially this weekend where we're in the shorter range and we're more confident in that occurring. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the simulated radar throughout all of these dates so we can make sure there's going to be some storminess in the same areas as the Cape. I'm just going to let you know. A little bit of a spoiler alert there will be. And then we're going to take a look at the Storm Prediction Center's uh, Day 3, Day 4, Day 5, Day 6, and Day 7 outlook here in just a moment. All right, now here's the simulated radar by timer taking a look at about 1 p.m. there on Friday, again, we did see some moderate Cape amounts that increased throughout the day on Friday. We do have that storminess around for Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri. Uh, let's take a look at about 1 p.m. on Saturday. And the interesting thing here is we get another snowstorm actually on the western end of this severe weather event, which again is a pretty common occurrence. Anytime you have that strong low pressure center, you see the severe weather to the east and the snow to the west. That's common this time of year as we're transitioning into spring. But heavy snowfall there for Colorado, New Mexico, uh, portions of Kansas, portions of Nebraska, and portions of Wyoming. Uh, but we also see the severe weather going on, likely for Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, and Arkansas, possibly even Texas by this point. And then Sunday, we begin to see a kind of line of thunderstorms move through Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri as well. Very, very interesting setup. That storminess eventually by Tuesday makes its way all the way to the East Coast and the Gulf Coast, where again, we had those high amounts of Cape all along the Gulf Coast. Uh, and then by the time we're taking a look at about Wednesday night, you can see tons of storminess where we had those like 3,000 amounts of Cape. So plenty of Cape going on uh, for this date and plenty of storminess. So we're going to want to watch very closely for that. 
Anyway, for the total snowfall on the entire model run here from our European model, you can see we have significant amounts. Uh, if you're anywhere in the grays, it's a dusting, if anything. Blues, 2 to 6. Purple, 6 to 10. Pinks, 10 to 20. And then those pastel shades there uh, for Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska, and even New Mexico. That's where we're at about 20 to 32. Uh, and in some of those kind of more purplish colors, that's where we're at about... I would say 34 to 48 inches of snow, although this model is picking up a maximum of 78.8. Do I think that's far-fetched? Absolutely. Uh, but I do think we will see a significant amount of snow for the Plains and the Rockies uh, this upcoming weekend and in through next week as well. Now, for all of the Storm Prediction Center's outlooks at this point, here is day three. We already took a look at this, but I'm just going to remind you, we have a marginal risk for Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri there that could be upgraded or downgraded, or it could just stay the same at this point. Uh, this doesn't look like the most significant severe weather day out of all of them. Then Thursday, all the way in through Friday morning, we don't really have a chance yet. On these day four through eight events, uh, the, the Storm Prediction Center is a lot more conservative because it's longer range. So we might still have a marginal or a slight risk this day, even though they're not showing a 15 or 20, or sorry, 30% chance at this point. It's very common to not see them use the day four through eight outlook and then still eventually bring on some severe weather risk. So this does not mean there's 0% chance. It just means there's not a significant chance at this point. But Friday and through Saturday morning, we do have that 15% chance there for Texas and Oklahoma, as well as a little bit of Missouri and Arkansas. Now, this could mean a, a multitude of things, from, but, but from my experience here, this means usually a, at least a slight risk of severe weather is what they're expecting for Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, and Missouri. As we move on towards Saturday and through Sunday, it's basically the same regions, but it just gets a little bit larger there. We see some bigger cities as well, like Dallas and Fort Worth getting included, uh, all the way up through Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, and Arkansas there. Again, this usually means at least a slight risk. Uh, to anything above that. And then Sunday and through Monday morning, they have Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma all included in this. Uh, day eight, they don't have any risk at this point. That doesn't mean they won't add one later. Uh, and then also what we're going to be watching for is in a few days, we will begin to see Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week, where the European model again has those very high amounts of CAPE. That'll be in range for their four to eight day outlook. So we will see if they have anything to say about that in the coming days. So stay tuned. We're going to be watching all of these things coming up. Anyway, for my confidence tab, we're at about a five out of six. The models are in great agreement for the severe weather risk of uh, the snowstorm. It's a little bit lower confidence than the severe weather activity, uh, but we're still pretty confident that there will be some snowfall going on as well. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you think this upcoming March and ongoing March will be like? And Janelle uh, Robovich said... I think March will be a flip-flop month of cold and warm weather for the Northeast, and I really think it's going to be a flip-flop month everywhere in the United States, all over the place, which probably will lead to more severe weather activity as we see those huge warm-ups followed by big cool-downs. That's usually what could bring severe weather this time of year. We will be watching for those things as well. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Sebastian Tao, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Alan Belemo, Adam S., Larry LaPan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's J, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flego, Garys, and John Quilisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.